Shalom everyone. This is the last program in the 12th step program to learning how to read and write Hebrew. What we covered in this program are all of the Hebrew letters, the vowels, learned how to put those two together so you can easily read any text in Hebrew correctly. The tools that we utilize for this and you can utilize in the future would be the Alephbet book, which lists each one of the letters. It's designed for adults and children, homeschooling or adults learning on their own. And each one of the letters is taught stroke by stroke how to write, how to read, and ample place, ample room is left for practice. Once you go through this book, the Aleph Bet book, which you can get from musicfromgod.com or by calling 602-48-BIBLE, once you get the book and you can get the, the DVDs, the programs that um, show all of the programs together, that will give you a powerful tool to learning how to read and write Hebrew. We covered many of the reasons why we want to read and write Hebrew, because that's the first step to allow you to use many tools. It will open many do doors for you in studying the text of the Bible in its original form in Hebrew and use dictionaries and lexicons and anything else that is out there that can help you judge for yourself what it is that the text is telling you because the text of the Bible was written personally for you. No one else can go and um, give you interpretations and um, make uh, a great value out of it for you because you can learn yourself and you can come up to the conclusions that God wanted you to come with for yourself. So this is, this is the reasons why we're learning uh, to read and write Hebrew. This is written for children and adults, and the system include the book, the DVDs, where the programs meet of me teaching each letter how to do it, how to read and write it, and there is a CD that goes with the book of reading from the book of Genesis. The first chapters of Genesis will be read slowly so you can repeat after it. And this way you can see it, you can hear it, and you can speak it. And by employing all of your senses, you will really have a comprehensive and powerful way of accomplishing this task that I hear from many people saying that one day I'm going to learn Hebrew, here it is, this is it. If, if you really want to do it, that will be the easiest way and the fastest way to accomplish this goal. Today, this is a culmination of all that we did in the 12-step program. I want to read the first sentence from the book of Genesis, which is so important but I will read it with you and you will see how it comes alive when you read it in the Hebrew. Let's go to the board and start reading Hebrew. The first thing I want to do is to remind you of how we read Hebrew. We read Hebrew by putting the vowels and the letters together. So let's take a look, a quick look again, at what the vowels are. Here are the six vowels, reduced six vowels, that we use. The first one is the A sound. Here is your horizontal line producing an A sound. Any one of those combinations would work for A. Here is the A sound. Two horizontal dots, three hanging grapes, and other forms, any one of those would work to produce the A sound. Here's the E sound. Usually it's a letter with a dot underneath. Occasionally you will see the letter Yud, which is the 10th letter of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet. And 
It's used here as a helper, as a grammatical helper, to produce the sound of E. Here's the sound of O. It's produced by putting a dot on top of the letter. And occasionally, you will see the letter Vav, the sixth letter of the alphabet, together with a dot on top next to a letter. That combination is a combination that produces the sound of O. Here is the sound of U. It's a combination of a letter and the three diagonal dots underneath. Sometimes it will not have the three diagonal dots. It will have instead the letter Vav and a dot in the middle to produce the sound of U, either the three diagonal dots or the letter Vav with a dot in the middle. Here is the sound of U. Uh. It's a short vowel, and it's produced by two letters, uh, two dots under the letter. The first thing we need to do is to go over the letters again. We'll go to the chart and see the letters again. That's the last time we're going to sing the Hebrew uh, letter song, and it goes like this. Aleph, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav, zayin, chet, tet, yud, kav, lamed, mem, nun, samech, ayin, pei, tzadik, kuf, resh, shin, taf, and that's the entire alphabet, Hebrew alphabet. Now, just for the sake of reinforcing it, I would like to sit here for a minute and pronounce each one of the letter. I want to pronounce it slowly, and you can repeat after me so you can get the sound the way it is in Hebrew. Here it is. Aleph. Bet. Gimel. Dalet. Hey, Vav, Zayin, Het, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech. Ayin, Pei, Tzadik, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tav. Those are the Hebrew letters. This is the pronunciation. And now we can go and read from Genesis. The first sentence, the first verse from the book of Genesis is read in the translation in English as follows. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now let's take a look at what the Hebrew does to the same information. The first word is consisted of the following letters. The letter bet with a dot inside, and that produces the B sound when you have the dagesh, that dot inside the letter. So that is the B sound. And it has the E uh, vowel underneath. B. The letter resh with an A sound, re. This aleph is here without a sound. It doesn't have a vowel. So it's here, obviously, for grammatical, grammatical reasons, and it doesn't have a sound. This is the letter sheen. It has the dot on the right side. Therefore, it's a sh, sheen and not an S sound, 
which would have been produced if the dot was on the left side, and it has a dot underneath, which gives us the E sound. So that's a she. We also have the U next to it, which makes that kind of combination of a dot underneath and a U next to the letter in order to produce the E sound. And then we have the Tav at the end. This is read Bure Sheet. Bure Sheet. The next word is Bet with a dot inside with an A sound, Ba. Then we have a Resh with an A sound, Ra. And an Aleph with no sound, with no vowel. Bereshit bara. Following is the letter Aleph with an A sound, right from here. A. Lamed with a dot on top. A letter with a dot on top produces the O sound. So this Lamed is read lo. A, lo. Then we have that E combination, just like here. This is the he, and a yud next to it, and a dot underneath, he. And a mem happened to be at the end of the word. So it's a mem sofit, an ending mem. You see that we are employing all of the elements that we learned about in the 12 step, step program. program. And um, this, is, this word is read e lo him. This word is aleph with an a sound right from here. Aleph with an a sound is read e. And the last letter of the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, is tav, et. Breshit bara Elohim et. This word is he with an a sound, ha. We have a sheen with a dot on the right side, and that's an sh sound, sh. But it also has an a sound, so it's a sha. You notice that the sheen, if we focus on it real good, we'll see that the sheen has a dot in the middle. And that dot is a dagesh. And you recall that when I introduced the concept of the dagesh, like in the bet, the dagesh is supposed to give you a strong form of the letter, not a soft one. So if this is a bet, it will have a dagesh. If it's a vet, it's softer, it will not have that dot in the middle. In the case of the sheen, we don't have two forms of stress of the letter. But the dagesh, that dot, shows us, tells us that there is some kind of emphasis on the word. And it's almost on, on this letter. And it's almost like the letter was doubled. So grammatically, you can think of this letter as two of them, as if it was two. So the way you stress it is hash shamayim. Almost like you, you can almost hear two sheens in there. So when you read it, you will emphasize that letter, hash shamayim. That's why this dagesh is here. So we have the letter he with an a sound, ha. Then we have the letter sheen with an a sound, ha sha. Then the letter mem with an a sound comes right from here, ma. The letter yud with an e sound with a dot underneath right from here, ha sha ma yi m, mem sofit, ending mem. You see that this mem and this mem are the same. The only difference is that this one happened to be at the end of a word, so it changes its graphical form, but nothing else. It's still the same mem. Hashamayim. 
This youth, by the way, which we got used to seeing it as a grammatical helper, like in here, this youth is not a grammatical helper. This youth is a consonant, is a real letter, because it has a vowel underneath. Hashamayim. Ve, the letter vav with an e sound, which we learn that that is one of, one of the connectors, which means end. The hey of shamayim is also a connector, which is the, and later on we'll decipher each one of those words. The et, ha, hey with an a sound, aleph with an a sound, resh with an a sound, ha, a, re, tz. Ha, this one is a tzadik sofit. Why is it tzadik sofit? It's an ending tzadik because it's in the end, at the end of a word, so we just change its form. We remember that there are five letters that do that. When they fall at the end of a word, they change the form. In this string of, le of uh, letters and words, we see several of those. We have bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Ending letters we have here in, in Elohim. We have a mem, ending mem, mem sofit. We have another mem sofit at hashamayim. And we have a tzadik sofit at, um, at the end of the word ha'aretz. Now, what does it mean? Breshit. Now, that's a whole story. What is Breshit? It was translated in the beginning. And we, in one of the 12-step programs, we talked about the bet being in something, but there are two forms of it, and we can demonstrate it this way. We have one form as a be, and one form as a ba, with an a sound. Now, the be means in a, and the ba means in the. Because the Bible starts with the letter bet with in a, the in a form, we, we can look at it as in a beginning. Now, we don't need to start a theological discussion here, but grammatically, if you honestly look at the text, grammatically is the form of in a beginning. At least entertain the idea that that's what it means. And of course, we talked about the different reasoning behind it. If it's in a beginning, maybe there were more than one beginning. And my take on this is, God is great. If he wanted to do a million beginnings, that's his business. And um, we are just his creation. And we're put here for a purpose, to be nice to each other. Basically, that's the purpose. It's the two pillars that the whole Bible stand on is your relationship with your God and your relationship with your fellow man. So that's our concern. If God wanted to do more than he is visible to us, which he probably did, that's fine. That's okay. I don't have any problem with that. So, be in reshit. Now, the word reshit is translated as beginning. It does have the word rosh in it. And the word rosh is resh with an O sound, and aleph with no sound, and the letter sheen. So rosh means head. Head not only as a physical head of a person, but also a head of the year that we call rosh hashana. Those of you who heard the term, the beginning of the Jewish year, rosh hashana the head of the parade, the head of the country, the head of the, the UN, 
and so on and so forth. So the word rosh is in there. Berosh bereshit, in the beginning. Now, we don't have time to do it today, but that word it can be broken out, uh, broken up to um, over 20 different words that all refer something about the beginning of the creation, of the nature of that beginning. And maybe one day we'll be able to do this on the program. Bereshit bara. Bara, bait with an a sound, resh with an a sound, and an aleph with no sound. Bereshit bara. Bara is created but it's used only in the case where God created something out of nothing. There are many words in Hebrew that refers to making or doing or, or um, in, in, in instigating or starting or, or all of that. There are many words for it. But bara is one word that is only used in creating something out of nothing. Breshit bara. And here is the word Elohim. Elohim which is God. Bereshit bara Elohim. And uh, there is a, a question about it because in Hebrew, the im sound usually ends plural words, words, words that are, are plural. And um, people are looking at it and say, why is the, word, the, the name of God in plural? Well, I have news for you. It's not the name of God in plural. Um, El, the word El, is a God, but it's also in Hebrew refers to as power. So Elohim is really a God with many powers, not many gods. And that is the simple solution to that question. Breshit bara Elohim et Hashamayim, Hashamayim. The letter He is the connector that we have here, and that is the. He created the. Shamayim. What is Shamayim? In ancient times, people would look up to the sky and they would see that it's blue, and from time to time, it, it, it dumps water on top of them. And they look down, they see the lakes and the rivers and the sea, and they're blue and they have water in them. So they figured out that there must be water up there. So they said, Sham, mine. Sham in Hebrew means over there. So over there, there's water. And it became the word Shamaim, which is the heavens. This is the first time that the word is used in the Bible. And at this case, at this place right here, the word shamayim implies the universe. So in the beginning, God created the universe. Later on, the word shamayim is demoted to sky. And from now on, we're talking about sky, the shamayim. But in the first sentence, the first verse of Genesis, the word shamayim means the universe. God created the universe. Ve'et, the vav is end, the, ve'et, ha'aretz. We have the he, which is a connector, the, aretz, is the word for earth. And look how it works. The word aretz and the word earth. The word aretz is consisted of the aleph, which is the sound of aleph, then the resh, the sound of r, and the tzaddik sofit, which we do not have in English, that gives us the th. So the word earth in English is really uh, the word aretz in Hebrew. So this is probably the most important sentence in the Bible because it tells us what happened in the beginning, uh, who did it, First of all, it tells us there is a God, which is an important piece of information if you want to read the Bible. And uh, where he did it, when he did it, when it was done, and what was done. What was done was the Shamaim, the heavens, and the earth were created. 
I hope that this series would serve you well, and I want to thank you all for participating in this process, which will give you a wonderful way of learning the, the reading and writing of the Hebrew language. It will give you great tools to use and utilize in your uh, learning the, the text of the Bible and get closer to your Creator just the way it was intended. Thank you for joining us in learning something about reading and writing Hebrew today. I hope that this program will motivate you to continue in your quest for more knowledge and understanding of God's Word. I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.musicfromgod.com music to explore some of our products and Hebrew learning aids. Make sure to order the Aleph Bet book and CD that will complement the teachings you are watching on this station and help you practice an understanding better. Learning Hebrew is fun and rewarding. Come visit us at our website, www.musicfromgod.com, musicfromgod.com, or call us at 602-48-BIBLE, 602-48-BIBLE.